On September 21st, 1972, martial law was declared under President Marcos in the Philippines. Many people went missing, were tortured, were killed, were harassed during this time under the guise that Marcos was quelling dissension. Many fought and gave their lives to end martial law and the Marcos dictatorship. They did this so the Filipino people would be free and not have to worry about being arrested or killed because they were outside at a certain time or because they were in a certain location. But although martial law has been lifted and Ferdinand Marcos has long dead, Anakbaya in New York recognizes that even to this day, the people of the Philippines continue to live under a new martial law. There is a dirty war in the Philippines! A U.S. funded dirty war! It's a war that you will never see reported in the news! A war that will not be covered by mainstream media! But it's a war that kills people every day! The Luman people are 18 tribes from Mindanao, an area in southern Philippines. There I had visited a, a school called Alcadev, which was a learning center that teaches children to preserve and defend their lands from foreign corporations and occupation. It is where this school sits that is one of the most rich lands in resources and minerals. I stayed with this community. This community consisted of families, teachers, students. I witnessed the powerful ways indigenous peoples live, practice and culture, and provide for their own education. And I was able to live and share meals and learn from two of the three that were killed by the military. Sir Emok or Emerito Samarca, who is the executive director of the high school of Alcadev in Hanayan, who was brutally slaughtered at the school. And also O'Neill Campos, who housed two of our exposures to teach us about leadership and what the Lumad have been doing and how they have had to struggle against a repressive state. As Filipinos here in the United States, it is our responsibility to expose and oppose how the Philippines and the U.S. government are working together to continue to support and protect the greed of these transnational corporations. It is our duty to demand justice for all Filipino people who are killed for fighting for their education rights, land rights, and the right to live. Uh, when I was there, I was able to integrate with the school for Luma children and was able to learn that um, not only are they teaching children how to read and write and do math, but they're also teaching children how to farm so that they can go back to their communities and actually practice that and also continue to teach their communities um, how to develop their livelihood. When they evacuate from the mountains where they live down to the city, they, ha they usually have like no place to stay, they don't really have food, and this can last for days or weeks depending on how long the military stays there. Right now there are more than 3,000 people that evacuated from the communities in Surigao del Sur and they're all in one small gym. It's a systematic displacement of people. We're calling on the Philippine government to first um, disband all paramilitary troops and we're also calling to the end of Oplan Bayanihan which is a counterinsurgency program. Um, that is killing uh, activists and community leaders in the Philippines. And here in the United States, we are calling to uh, calling for the end of foreign military financing. Fifty million dollars of our taxpayers' money goes to the Philippines every year to support these counterinsurgency programs. And uh, as U.S.-based Filipinos, we do not want our money to fund the killing of our own people.